In today's For Honor video, we're going to be taking a look at the Jane Jun in For Honor. Jane Jun is a stamina regenerator and a dodge specialist. We're also going to take a look at Jane Jun's entire kit and feats. And I'm also going to show you guys some gameplay of the Jane Jun. That way you guys get a better understanding about Jane Jun. So starting off with the JJ, we're really going to go ahead and take a look at JJ's entire kit, which is his moveset. So we'll go over the lights and the heavies first. And we'll just talk about the regular ones first before we go into the chains. So regular lights... They do 12 damage on all sides and they cost only 9 stamina. Then for the heavies, the regular ones, they do 27 damage on the sides and top does 24. I don't know why top is 24. I feel like they should buff that to make it 27 for even on all sides. For the chain lights, the chain lights themselves, they do 12 and 15, which adding it up would do 27 damage overall on all sides. So it is 27 damage if you do if you do the math right 12 plus 15 that's 27 with 9 stamina So for the chain heavies you have the first one that does 27 then the second one that does 28 Which would add up to 55 damage and it does 12 stamina and this I don't think is for the same now for the top heavy is a bit different it does 30 damage on top so it's a bit different on top i feel like they should buff the top a little bit than the sides but that's just me in my opinion and the same we'll go over is jj's front four dodge attack his dodge heavy attack so this here is like a startup opener for jj if you ever want to just uh, mix your entire kit up and go with this you can you can also go with the light right after this too the next thing we'll go over is jj side dodge attacks this here makes jj a really good side dodge specialist the only thing that i would say is to not use the side dodges a lot and why i say that is because a lot of people tend to parry these side dodges so you just want to be careful when using them but they do 22 damage and they cost 12 stamina also a little thing with the side dodge heavies if you press heavy like say like you just move here you can press light in the middle of that animation so you can just press light in the middle of this and it'll do a light right there it's a good tactic but it's very is parryable it really is a lot of people will suspect this if you're playing with jj you just want to be careful when using this technique the next thing we'll go over for jj is his kick so jj's kick is another opener that you can do which will give you a light right after it's a good way to start your openers but it is very easy to dodge honestly jj's kick is very easy to dodge i wish they would speed it up a bit it'd be really good if they do that just speeding up just speeding up the kick and all would help jg tremendously to where he can just get this kick off and he can go into his other combos and then he could probably do it again if he wants to you just mix it up if you want if you want to do that and all but again i will show it on screen for anybody that wants to know how to do the kick all right the next thing we'll go over for jj is his sifu stance now jj's sifu stance is like nabushi's stance her hidden stance and all but you get to regenerate your stamina if your stamina is low see as my stamina is low right here i can just regenerate it like that and i get my stamina back quickly and swiftly but the sifu stance isn't just for stamina you can also use it to dodge attacks as well as you saw there, I was able to use the Sifu stance and I was able to dodge that Peacekeeper's heavy and as swiftly, honestly. JJ makes it look so cool, honestly. Uh, that's why I like JJ a bit because of this, just the Sifu stance. You can dodge people's attacks. You can also regenerate your stamina back too. And again, the way to do this is you want to hold back on the right stick. And if you're on another platform, you would just go ahead and look in the moveset. Okay, the next thing we'll go over for Jing Jun is Jing Jun's parry counters. So Jang Jun has a parry counter where he can uh, choke someone, still take their stamina a little bit, and will knock them into the wall or slap them into the wall and all. So as you saw there, Jang Jun held his opponent, took the stamina away a little bit, and flung them into the wall or slapped them into the wall and we get a heavy off. It's basically a wall splat. You can use this to get a wall splat. And you can also you get a heavy, a free heavy and all. So I highly advise if you're near a wall to use this. Use those parry counters to your advantage with Jay John. Also, I did forget one last parry counter. Now this parry counter I don't use. It's really Jane Jun's zone, but in unblockable form. I I rarely use the zone as much. I mean, yeah, some people would do this. I don't use it too much. I tend to forget about it and all. Whenever I play JJ, I usually just go with that. I, for, I keep forgetting about that zone that you can do. So you can do the zone right after. You can go with the unblockable if you want to. Okay, the next thing that I will go over with JJ is the zone. Now, Jane Jun's zone is on the right side and all. And it does 16 damage. It's a bit slow or a bit sluggish a bit, I, I could say. And it does cost 60 stamina. 
so you will want to not use this too much use it to only finish your opponent off if anything that's what i would do is use it to finish your opponent off and probably get a kill and then the next thing i'll go over for jane jun is jane jun's other zone in sifu stance so jane jun has a zone in sifu stance that that is pretty good it is an okay zone it does 16 damage but it does cost 45 stamina you can get back into this and all and you can just use the zone if you want to now you can't spam it like you used to to where jane jun had it like a spammy zone and whatnot that's why i i did like jj but at the same time they did patch it to where you can't do that no more uh you were you were able to just go back into here and then just do it again it, it was insane you could just do it over and over again but you can't do that no more they patched that so now jane jun zone is easy to parry but sometimes it's not a lot of people do get caught off guard when using this so i would highly just be careful when using it just use it to either finish your opponent off or if you want to throw it out just to throw it out you can last thing that i'll go over for jane jun is his running attack so his running attack is simple like this so that's his running attack it does 20 for the first one then 25 for the second so that's around like 45 of damage and 12 stamina costs as well or the stamina drains cost 12 stamina okay we went over jane jun's entire kit now we're gonna go ahead and go over the feats here we go okay so with jj's feats the first one we have here for tier one against all odds nearby allies do more damage the more enemies are around so when enemies are around you your allies do more damage for the second one this here we know is deadly this here is a passive this attack deals slightly more damage to every three seconds then we have speed revive this here again is passive rapidly revives fallen teammates this here i would most definitely take if you're playing 44 now for the first one for tier two this here is benefaction this here is a passive nearby allies benefit from sifu's poise effect depends on how long the stance is held so this depends on how long you hold the sifu's poise and nearby allies will benefit from it which i think is more into the stamina regen and all so this is pretty good for anybody that is using jane jun's uh second tier feet here okay so for the tier two second feet we have inspire allies and yourself do more damage soldiers fight faster we already know about this you do more damage and soldiers will fight faster we already know about executioner's fight this here's a passive when executing an enemy hero you gain an extra amount of health based on the execution's duration now, now the next one we have is smoothing mist this here heals allies in an area of effect based on how many enemies are around so this will heal anyone around you or all your allies around you based on how many enemies are around so if you have like four enemies around then you'll get more healing i would say it'll be double times the healing and all so it'll it'll basically i think the maximum the maximum health for it is 30 with four nearby enemies yeah you'll you'll get a big amount of health back uh, if you have this feat equipped that is for the second one we have tough as nails this here is a passive it raises the maximum health when unlocked so it raises the maximum health by 10 percent pretty much but it does not heal when first unlocked at all so you'll lose a little bit of health once you have this for the third one we have second wind this recovers some of your health it recovers around 30 health instantly and for the tier four feats the first one we have here is fiery barrage this leaves fiery sparks around the target that stuns all enemies who cross it so it casts a 16 meter aoe circle of fireworks and if people cross it they lose their stamina and it blinds them too for the second one we have fire flash you throw a projectile creating a fire effect over an area Area. for the last one we have phalanx this grants a shield to all alive teammates and yourself included so this grants a 100 health over shield to all alive teammates and yourself for about 10 seconds this is really what i go with for my jane gen build now sometimes i will switch this out to maybe go with phalanx or fiery barrage i'll just switch between the two but again for the feats it's all up to you on what you want to try again test the feats out for yourself and try them just try them out what you guys think would be better for you if you want to take speed revive you take it you want to take aspire go ahead and take it you want to switch this out and go with tough as nails you can take it if you want to switch this out go with phalanx or any other feat you can again i'm here to just give you guys a really good overview of all these feats that way you guys can test them out and try them out if you're new to for honor and all all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you gameplay of the JJ. So we're going to go over some clips and all. But for this first clip, I go up against the Griffin. Now, this Griffin, he was a bit iffy, but he wasn't that too bad. So he went for a guard break here, and he got me on the wall. And he went for heavy. He got me a guard break again. Well, he was going for one. And I went for a light, and I went for my unblockable. And then I went for my Sifu, and then parried him. And then I got him with choke here for a wall splat for some damage of 24. Now, I could have gone for the side, but I went for top to be safe. Got a light parry on him, and you always go for top 
after a light parry and then i soft fainted here i soft fainted it again and i actually came up with the victory with the jj right here all right here's another clip ladies and gentlemen with me and the jj so right here we're facing a gladiator and this gladiator was okay but he went for too many skewers so you see here for the first one i got him with the first skewer here and i guard broke him got some damage going i counter guard broke here against his guard break and he was going for his toe stab he went for the skewer again which you don't want to do that's much with gladiator i mean if you do it at first with the start of the round then sure you can catch people but since i played with gladiator i know i know some gladiators would do it so i went with the light to interrupt him and he interrupted me with his light too so we were both trying to interrupt each other and trying to get the win i go for my cephas stance there to dodge his toe stab and i counter guard broke here and i guard broke him here to get some damage which that was good i needed that guard break and i got another guard break from the soft faint and i was trying to get my stamina back and i tried to go for a heavy to finish it up but i couldn't get it because he, he parried it he read it and i kind of guard broke him here i was trying to counter guard break him i was gonna go for a light but i decided to go for heavy for the win okay here we go we got another clip here this here is with tiandi now Tiandi again is really strong and he goes ahead and marks me for death and all that way he can get some more damage in but it wasn't going to work here so I went ahead and started off with my opener there which was the front forward dodge heavy and I went ahead used one of the light animations and I got the heavy all right there and I went for a soft faint there and I'm trying to get my stamina back and I'm being more turtly and defensive and all that way I don't get hit as much. I was trying to go for a guard break. I did get a parry though and I went for the choke which in this instance I shouldn't have went for it and I got with and I went with the kick the opener kick and all so that way i can get something going then i got the light parry and then i let that fly and you always let that fly and it's so beautiful when you do it all right ladies and gentlemen so with jing jun and for honor i feel like jing jun is a pretty good hybrid in this game now he's not like the best best hybrid but he is a pretty good hybrid a pretty solid hybrid for anybody that wants to play with him he is hard though he is a very hard hybrid for beginners but as time goes on as you learn his entire kit it's really easy just to get to get used to his entire kit and all because this kit can be easy for anybody that takes the time to learn it learn what is good to use and what not good to use and come up with their own play style and try to use it effectively against other people because again y'all everyone in for honor doesn't have to have the same play style you don't have to like copy anybody just move set from move set and all you can come up with your own and try to make it work that's what i make these guys for is to help people come up with their own stuff and make it work for them and overall jane jun i say he's just i say he's in b i think he's in like the b column either b or c i'm not sure just an overall tier list for me i say either b or c just because his kit is still pretty good and there are really good JJs that know how to play this play this character. There are some good JJs out there that know what they're doing with the Sifu's poise and what they're doing on regenerating their stamina and using the dodge attacks to their fullest. So overall, I just say B or C, but let me know in the comments where do you guys think he would belong on the tier list. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I do have memberships available right now. So if you want to become a member, a Raptor Pet member that is, you can... You can do it for only three dollars you can literally become a raptor pet member for three dollars and all and i will give you personalized shout outs and i'll reply to your comments in the comment section below and i will also be uploading some little sneak peek videos for anyone that joins and becomes a member so go ahead and join a member or become a member if you want to yeah guys that's pretty much it for today's video on the jane join if you did enjoy today's video be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and comment down below what you guys think about him and for honor do you like him hate him or do you think he's okay let me know in the comments. And as always, I'm the Game Raptor. Stay well, Raptor Pack, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Bye bye.